GPW 1000 Gravity Master G-Shock Watch Disassembly. Let's begin. You're gonna need a 2.0mm hex screwdriver. Two of them. But since I only have one, I'm gonna need to use another tool, being my pliers, in order to remove this screw bar on the side of this watch band. Check this out. When I rotate one side, the other side will rotate at the same time. So this is to ensure that these screws won't loosen up due to vibrations. Now, if you were to remove it, you're gonna need to hold on one side and unscrew on the other side. Just enough so that I could loosen it up. And then I'm gonna be just using my finger for this because I don't want to scratch this even further. It's gonna be pretty tight because they do use the uh, trade locker if I'm not mistaken to make sure that this screw stays in place. So do it. Shows quality. And pretty much similar way people are locking screws on your car. And you can see the trade locker on this side of this screws as well. So this is the screw bar and this is the other side of the screws. Now I'm gonna need to remove this side and all the screws on this side as well. One, two, three. And I believe one, two on this side only. Quick parts checking before we proceed. This is the screw bar, including the cylinder. It feels pretty soft, so I'm guessing it is aluminum or probably it is stainless steel. Regardless, this is the thing that allow the screws, the screw bars, to rotate without any obstructions. You know, this is all five screws, all of which has ion plated on top of them, so they are pretty much rust resistance. And this is the watch band, so they've been removed like that, one side. And this is the other side of the watch band where the buckle is at. If you want to replace this, just push the uh, spring bar in there using a tool like this, basically spring bar remover, and it will come out just like that. And it's just fall down to the floor. Anyway, that's pretty easy. Take this out, and if your band keeper got scratched on them, you could polish it out this way. Now we are left with just the watch body and if you are still curious on the sizing, let's quickly measure it. The lug of this watch has a size of 15.61 millimeters or 15.60 millimeter. So if you are thinking about changing to a different or custom watch band, measure the size and the total width size, basically the part that connects to the bezel will be a about 30 millimeters so it is a really hefty and big watch and if you're thinking about the holes over here which is quite big as well you're going to be able to fit in the screw with a size of three millimeters so this is a really thick screws for just a watch this thing not gonna break unless your arm breaks first next part is removing the watch bezel so one of you guys requested me to try 
and pry this bezel out without removing the buttons which I'll try afterwards but first we're going to remove four screws on top of this bezel that holds everything in place. Okay, you'll notice that I already removed this front metal bezel holder but I still won't be able to remove this metal piece because it was clipped to this red layer of plastic. This red layer, basically the support or the shock absorber for the watch, is in ring shape so it's holding the bezel in all sides. Meaning if I were to pull this off, I'm gonna need to break this part which is something that I'm not willing to do. So instead of just uh, forcing it out we're gonna need to take this one button out this crown out this one buttons out and one button on this side out because if you were to just pry this resin bezel even though it is flexible it is pretty thin as well it will end up bending or breaking this plastic because this red part is not a soft plastic once you break this that's permanent so the safer way if you were to remove the bezel either to custom or clean is to remove the buttons and all the sides as well and in order to do that obviously we're gonna need to access to all of them from the back let's do that The back plate screws on this G-Shock watch is just common so there's nothing special there. If you lost them, you could find a replacement quite easily. But the interesting part is the design of the back plate itself. It was built to flush in like that to insert the password truck speaker and also to provide some space for this alpha gel, in this case a red colorway. And that is pretty interesting and I guess that's the reason why the watch has to be this thick. Now let's have a look on the inside. Firstly, I'm going to need to remove this alpha gel cushioning or back cushion for this watch feels really something else next thing is remove this piezoelectric speaker so you won't lose them like that next thing is remove this side cushion as well just like that in here there's a few more alpha gel be on this side one on this side and five on this side of this cover this is just plastic put them aside now you can see the movement already it operating in CLB2016 battery a lithium-ion rechargeable battery a thick one which is not available for public purchase at least not as easily because it is so unpopular I guess and that's the problem that I'm currently facing so I'm disassembling this G-Shock watch to replace the battery but I still cannot find a replacement so I look it up on a method on how to solve this from Castle Japan apparently I could just send it away to them and they will replace the battery for about 3000 yen but I have to send it away to Casio Japan which is gonna cost me more before I send it away why not disassemble the watch and show you guys how the interior looks like if I didn't break anything this time okay um, in order to remove this movement first you're gonna need to take this crown out like that just unscrew it or unlock it there's a push word over here telling you to push the lever in there pretty much the same way as you're removing the uh, crown on any master of the G-Shock so let's do that
if you watch my GPW 2000 G-Shock disassembly video, you'll notice that on the inside there's an O-ring, but in this GPW 1000 version, there's no O-ring at all. I'm guessing that's because this crown could only lock with one method only, just by single click. Where if you were to compare it to the GPW 2000, you need to manually tighten it up, and I guess that's the reason why the O-ring is important to make sure that someone didn't, uh, you know, loosen them up accidentally. But that's okay, I'm guessing the O-ring is in the cylinder, but we'll find out after I remove it. Which then, we could remove this, and remove these buttons, and this button on this side. But before we could do all that, we're gonna need to take this whole movement out, which is already possible enough. So, I usually start with this lever over here, just lift this thing up, and hold it with your finger. Okay now. This is casing out of the way, and here is the movement for this GPW 1000 G Shock up close. I don't think I'll be disassembling this movement at all because there's nothing, there's no problem with this part whatsoever. But if you want me to disassemble this entire piece, just let me know down in the comment section. I'll do it on a separate video because this is gonna take a lot of time to perform. So I'm just gonna leave this as it is and disassemble it based on your request so now let me put this thing aside and we'll proceed with things that a bit more simpler less complex that is disassembling the watch crown cylinder and buttons okay let's do that Now the hardest part of this whole process is already over. Next thing is just take all the buttons and the cylinder out. Let's start with the cylinder over here. Pull it out like that fairly easily. And there you can see there's two O-ring on the exterior part and I have a feeling there's usually two more on the inside. And that what provides the water resistance when you unlock the crown. Next thing is the watch buttons, which could be, I believe they could be removed already. Let me try to pull them out. Just like that, you'll notice there's the two O-ring, a washer, and a spring. And this button is made out of metal, seems like it. And next to it, another buttons, basically the same constructions. And the third button, which is over here. This one is slightly thicker, I believe. So I'm gonna need to, all right, pull it up. Like that, same constructions, except it is now made out of plastic. Now, here we are. This is the watch without all the buttons. And like I already demonstrated before on my GPW 2000 video, all you have to do now is just push the casing out by holding the bezel on the sides because there's nothing else that hold them in place. Just Let's see now, something got stuck somewhere on this side over here. Oh, look at that, there's some kind of cushioning in there. Anyway, that could be ignored, right? And there we are. Okay, everything's already been removed, except for the city code index ring, but this is just being double-sided, so there's nothing that's complicated going on over there. So, here is the watch bezel. So imagine if you try to remove the watch bezel, over this metal part. Check this out. Even after I take the whole piece out, it is still impossible for me to bend it over and out of this direction. So that's why you're gonna need to remove the entire piece to get to this point. Besides, whenever you wanna put it back inside, this matter is also 
the easiest way and also the safest way for the parts. The red part is the thing that holds or basically lock both of these parts together. I'm gonna try to flex this bezel now because it's pretty much free and then it will be out. So notice that there's a clip, a ring around here that hold this metal bezel in place on all sides. So that's why it is almost impossible to flex it over. Besides these two plastic part over here. And they are they have some flex to them, but they are pretty hard plastic. So if you try to force it out, this thing might break. And again, there's no replacement for that. So there's another part. It is being clipped all the way in there, I guess. So a few you're gonna need to add some force to remove it, but then again, it's okay because you could already flex this uh, black bezel. Let me try to pull it out like that. Almost break it though. Okay, this is the holder again. Check this how deep it was buried inside the bezel. Okay, that will summarize all the things on how to disassemble your GPW1000 Gravity Master G Shock watch. And before I end this video, just a quick shot with all the components together like I always show you guys so if you have any comments and questions like always comment down below and if you're a fan of this type of contents become a patreon link will be available down in the description box as well that's gonna help me a lot with this whole assembly process covering all the costs the expense for the tools and the gears and the phase of fixing all this as well thanks to you for watching see you guys in the next video